Believe it or not, cake sprinkles have been around since the late 18th century, when French confectioners used them as decorations. Chocolate sprinkles are believed to be invented in 1936 by a Dutchman responding to a little boy's request for a chocolate bread topping. British people stupidly call sprinkles hundreds and thousands, because their dumb nomenclature doesn't bother accounting for if there are less than 100 sprinkles at any given time. But that's at least not as bad as people who call sprinkles jimmies. Who the heck is Jimmy, and what business does he have getting his grubby mitts on my cupcake toppings? Cake sprinkles come in a variety of colors, as well as pink. They're found decorating many treats from cupcakes to cookies to dessert hot dogs. They can quickly turn a bland, mediocre dessert into one with six times the sugar content. A variety of liquid and powdered narcotics are among the ingredients used to make these dessert decorations. Fat chips are also an ingredient. A worker adds a tiny plastic bucket's worth of fat chips to the mixing tank, which is the standard unit of measurement for sprinkle creation. The mixing tank also doubles as a koi fish pond. The koi fish have been removed as they are pre-diabetic. Meanwhile, Strong Marcus adds powdered sugar to a dry mixer, roughly 19 tiny plastic buckets. Different colorants are added, such as this one made from pomegranate, this one made of liquid black, and this one that's pure melted additives. This batch will turn into whatever the fuck color this is. During filming, the factory's sewer line accidentally broke, which was captured by our cameras on film. This batch was ruined and promptly scrapped for a new one. Please ignore the fact that the ruined batch is being placed into the mixer. The factory's legal department has pinky promised us that they didn't use the tainted batch. Later, the mixer is opened to reveal the factory has accidentally made bubblegum again, instead of sprinkles, which is a colossal fuck-up. The workers are punished with forced labor in the bubblegum mines until they can harvest enough materials for another batch of sprinkles. Meanwhile, the pink spaghetti is ready, a favorite dish of sprinkle slaves who haven't seen their families in so long that they've forgotten what a home-cooked meal is due to continually being locked in the bubblegum mines. To keep the consistency of the sprinkles from collapsing, the factory is kept at the optimal temperature of 103 degrees Fahrenheit, or about 43 tiny plastic buckets. Strong Marcus has had enough of this shit. The pink spaghetti falls into a holding vat, where Peter is given his designated 30 seconds where he's allowed to touch the product, lest he become greedy and consume with touch envy. The pink spaghetti, which has actually been colored and flavored dough this whole time, haha I got you, moves to a tumbler to break the strands into tiny pieces. A worker pulls out samples by hand to inspect their quality and coloring. This is the absolute limit to which the sprinkles should be touched. A nozzle sprays a mixture of confectioner's glaze and edible wax to the- Oh my god, Peter, stop! Peter, stop! You've already touched the sprinkles earlier, Peter, for the love of god, stop! You're gonna compromise the batch! Someone help! Peter's violating company regulations, help! The sprinkles are moved from the tumbler into a machine that simulates a typical day in San Francisco. These conditions are perfect to help sort the sprinkles by the correct size. These sprinkles here were designated for people who are colorblind. As you can see, they come in white, pink, brown, yellow, brown, brown, bluish brown, and mystery color. All the shades of brown are mixed together to create a batch to be sent to an optometrist office. Peter, Peter, no! P why, no, Peter! Why, Peter, why? Oh, I think I'm gonna be sick. 
Once the sprinkles have been mixed, it's onto the sprinkle filling machine, which uses a jet of air to rinse the inside of the bottles with the different sprinkles. Then it's onto the capping machine, which we all wish was just more footage of the filling machine. Then it's off to the labeling area, where various warnings about how much the sprinkles have been fondled are applied to the bottle. Here's a fun sprinkle game you can play at home. There's an image of a penis hidden in this pile of sprinkles. Leave a comment below saying which color sprinkles it's made out of.